is Nora Steurer. I work with the Global Alliance for Buildings and Construction, Global IBC, hosted by the United Nations Environment Programme in Paris, France, and I will be your moderator today. We're really looking forward to hearing from inspiring speakers on a topic that is important to the industry and very timely. Allow me to start with a few housekeeping items. The webinar will be recorded and will be available for viewing on the Sustainable Hospitality Alliance website. All attendees are in listen-only mode, but you can find the chat to all attendees and speakers to the right of the presentation screen in the features section on the chat box item. And please do share your questions in the Q&A section through the Q&A icon on your right-hand features section as well. Allow me to say a few words um, on behalf of Booking.com and the Sustainable Hospitality Alliance. Both are committed to responsible hospitality and to working alongside the travel industry to make sure our planet and its communities can thrive now and in the future. Therefore, Booking.com and Sustainable Hospitality Alliance have come together to create this knowledge series to share practical advice and showcase good practices from across the sector on key sustainability issues. And with this webinar, we would like to focus on the many benefits of sustainable hotel design, both in construction and refurbishment. And I'd like to begin by thanking Booking.com and by thanking Sustainable Hospitality Alliance in putting together the series and convening a truly knowledgeable panel of speakers. You can see them here on the screen, our distinguished speakers. I already introduced myself as your moderator, um, and we also are delighted to welcome Madhu Rajesh, the CEO of the Sustainable Hospita Hospitality Alliance, as well as Thomas, La Thomas Laughlin from the Sustainable Supply Lead, Booking.com, Rosmir Music, who is Operations Officer at with the International Finance Corporation, IFC, and Alan Agaholm, who is the CEO of the BC Hospitality Group. I will get us started, so allow me to just share my uh, screen. I do hope you can see my screen all right. And I would like to uh, get, get us started by setting the scene, reminding everyone on the global impact of buildings. Of course, hotels are hosted in buildings. So the way we design our buildings and whether our buildings are sustainable has a huge impact on whether hotels as such are sustainable. A couple of words on why buildings, why should we care? And afterwards, I would like to say a few words about the Global ABC's approach to decarbonizing buildings, because I think it has a bearing on this webinar. Why buildings? Uh, many of you, I'm sure, are aware of the enormous impact of buildings, but a couple of figures to remind us. The equivalent of Paris is added in floor space every five days. As I said in the beginning, I'm based in Paris, France. It is a lovely city. We can certainly see more of those, but it shows us the magnitude of the problem, but also the window of opportunity we have here and that we need to get it right. Half of the buildings standing in 2060 haven't even been built. So we have this window to build them in the right, in the sustainable, in a sustainable manner. This was the first point. Secondly, buildings already now are a heavyweight for energy and for emissions. We know from our global status report for buildings and construction that buildings and construction are responsible for 36% of final energy demand and almost 40% of emissions. And we know now that we cannot achieve the Paris Agreement goals of 1.5 degrees without decarbonizing this sector. I just want to say a few words about policies, just to remind everyone how essential those are for buildings and also for hotels, because they shape the agenda within which we can act. 
I said that over half of buildings standing in 2060 haven't even been built yet, and most of those will be built in areas and countries that do not even have mandatory energy codes in place. So this is an urgent area to act. And we encourage also industry to reach out to policymakers and uh, showcase them that they are front runners, that they are really taking this seriously, but that they need policy to also provide a conducive framework. One word on nationally determined contribution. Some of you may know this term. It is when countries commit to actions, to measures to achieve the Paris Agreement goals. Uh, what we know is that 136 countries actually mention buildings in their, what we say, NDCs, which is good news, but most like a commitment to net zero or to concrete measures and targets. And I do want to highlight something which I think has really a bearing on hotels, which is that we see a decrease in energy intensity in many areas, which is really good news, which is due to our vast improvements in energy efficiency, particularly for space heating and for lighting. You can see it here on the graph. But one area where we really see an increase in energy intensity is for space cooling. This is going to become a massive issue as we see an increase of warm days on the one hand and an increase of global middle class that are, of course, also available and keen to travel. Um, and of course, space cooling is essential for comfort, not least in hotels. So this is an urgent area to act upon. Thirdly, of course, buildings are, it's not just about climate. Buildings are essential for sustainable development all around, and they're essential for our well-being. In many countries, we spend 90% of our time indoors. Hotels are certainly all about that, all about spending time indoors and spending good time indoors. Um, they are essential for livable and equitable cities, for health and well-being, for renewable energy integration, you name it. A few words about our approach to decarbonizing buildings. We were founded at COP21 with the aim of a zero emission efficient and resilient buildings and construction sector. We are a global advocate and a catalyst. We are a trusted platform to set targets and track progress of this essential sector. And we support countries, but increasingly also companies in setting priorities and measures based on their situation. We have developed regional roadmaps for Latin America, Asia, and Africa on the essential steps to decarbonize buildings, which we consider in eight areas, urban planning, new buildings, existing buildings, building operations, appliances, materials, resilience, and clean energy. If you'd like to more, know more, please visit our website, globalabc.org, where you can download these. Each of the work, each of the uh, regional roadmaps contain policies for each area. For each area here, you see an example for new buildings Asia, for instance, compliance with building energy codes and participation of the informal sector, but also building labeling are essential policy areas. And we're currently implementing these regional roadmaps on the national level in Vietnam and Cambodia. And by the way, private sector is warmly invited to participate. In fact, our roadmaps have been created through participation of over 700 experts, not least from the private sector. So if you're interested, do get in touch. That's it from me for now, uh, for setting the scene. Uh, Ella, I will just stop sharing my screen. And I now have the great pleasure to uh, pass the virtual mic on to our next speaker, to Madhu Rajesh on the, on the business case for sustainable hotels. Madhu is from the Sustainable Hospitality Alliance. Over to you, Madhu. Thank you so much, Nora. Um, I wanted to just confirm if everyone can see my screen. Uh, Nora, uh, can you see my screen? Please, could you confirm that? I cannot see your screen right now, Madhu. I can see you, but not your screen. I could see it a moment ago. I'd just like to try again. Does that work? No. Okay, let me try again. Just bear with me a second. If any of the other speakers can see her screen, please let me know in case it's an issue on my end. Yes, Madhu, now it works. Yeah, yeah I have it Perfect. on full screen. Yeah, okay, Perfect. thank yes. you. Sorry about that. 
Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you so much for having me on the panel. And what a great introduction, Nora, in terms of setting the scene for um, why should the hotel industry be thinking about green hotels? Um, I'd like to start by introducing Sustainable Hospitality Alliance. Uh, we are an organization that works very closely with 14 uh, hotel companies across the world, and our members represent uh, companies of all sizes, uh, from companies that have thousands of hotels, companies that only have a handful of hotels, but um, you know that diversity is quite deliberate. Uh, our members have also got global footprint as well as regional and local footprints, and that kind of gives us a very good knowledge um, and insights into the industry uh, of what works at scale and where are in, uh, you know where are there examples of some innovative good practice um, that can be scaled up and very often we find um, some of the smaller companies um, are quite innovative and nimble in that respect and perhaps challenge some of the larger brands on uh, how far um, you know the needle can be pushed uh, across the board our members um, you know represent about 25% of the global hotel industry in terms of the uh, number of rooms. Um, and it's a true example of pre-competitive collaboration where brands in the marketplace that perhaps are competing with each other for business, they come together with us because they believe in, um, in collective action and they recognize that the scale of the challenges that we have at hand are bigger than uh, what any one company can handle on their own. So they really, really are committed to acting collectively on some of the most material issues that um, that face um, the people and planet. So I'd like to say, um, you know, uh, we have identified with the industry four issues that are perhaps the most material for the hotel industry in our view, and they're focused around people and planet. Um, on the people agenda, we focus on human rights and youth employment because we want to protect the people um, that work with the industry as well as uh, give opportunities for economic uh, engagement for some marginalized people in the communities that hotels exist in. Um, the planet agenda, which is a very, very big focus for us, and perhaps even more so um, in the post-pandemic world, um, is focused very much around climate action and water stewardship. Um, so those are our four areas of action. And today I would like to talk about the business case for uh, sustainable hotels, which we have developed in collaboration with the International Finance Corporation. And you'll hear from Bruce Mayer uh, a bit later in the panel. And we developed this uh, with IFC purely because very often when we talk about environmental sustainability, uh, hotel companies feel that actually once a hotel is operational, there's only limited amount that can be done. There's still a lot that can be done, but it's limited in terms of the impact you can achieve if you're looking at sustainability purely from uh, an operational lens. Um, the best impact and outcome that we've seen hotels achieve is when sustainability is built in right at the design stage of uh, when a hotel is being designed or at a stage when uh, a hotel is going to um, uh, be refurbished. So the design and the retrofit stages are very, very important when it comes to sustainability. The other thing is whenever I've spoken with hotels about sustainability, they feel, um, you know, because of the dependency on, on the stages where the biggest impact is, actually it's very important to engage with asset owners and investors because of the industry's asset-like model. And um, very often there are myths around that with owners and investors where they believe that sustainability is expensive, um, it has um, um, you know, uh, long payback periods and low return on investment. And actually when we did our research with IFC, we found several of those myths are actually unfounded, and that's what we set out to do with the business case. Some of our key learnings that I'd like to focus on sharing with, uh, with you today is that actually sustainability is a way in which operational costs, you know, by integrating that in the design stage, operational costs can be reduced, and that means profit margins can be improved for, uh, for hotels. We also found that uh, customers and consumers, so B2B customers as well as consumers, are increasingly focused on sustainability. And therefore, if you can demonstrate your commitment, that actually begin, becomes a differentiating factor. And I know you'll hear from Thomas and the research that Booking.com has done when it comes to um, end users and guests and their preferences on sustainability in a minute, but that just validates our findings from, from the business case as well. The third thing that we learned was around um, you know, how you can future-proof the asset itself by increasing its value if you have invested in, uh, in green buildings. Um, and you know, there's an element of risk uh, mitigation 
um, certifications that add value to the building and looking at renewable sources of energy supply. So many advantages that we found uh, that corroborated our research in terms of um, sustainability being not just a social or a moral imperative, but actually being a commercial or an economic imperative when you think about, uh, about hotel businesses. So I'd just like to talk you through some of those findings in detail. Um, so one, we found that actually very often the investments that are needed for some interventions that have the biggest impact are quite low and therefore have a very low pay payback period. In some cases, it was a matter of weeks that you got your original investment back and then it started adding to the profit margins. So the, the, one of the myths around payback period or um, a return on investment was certainly busted um, through our research and you'll hear more about that from, um, uh, from Thomas. The lots of case studies we found that we have included in a publication on the business case, which is available on our website. So I won't go through it all in detail, but I'd encourage you to, uh, to go to our website and download uh, the case and read it um, if you have time. The second we found was the increase in revenue, uh, and that's largely coming from uh, the B2B angle as well as the B2C angle, where increasingly sustainability is a part of consumer uh, decision-making criteria through their RFPs. And if you're able to demonstrate differentiation then uh, on, on that front, then all other things being equal, um, guests are um, increasingly inclined to go for a greener or more sustainable hotel. In terms of future-proofing investment strategies, that was another thing that we learned that actually um, focusing on sustainability reduces the long-term risk of investments and it helps uh, uh, you know, diversify the investor base. In fact, um, Rusmir will talk about some examples of green finance that are available uh, for um, you know, uh, asset owners that are looking at uh, making commitments to green buildings. Um, so that's another advantage of focusing on sustainability. Regulatory risks. That's a really important factor because we felt in case of long-term um, long systemic change, of course, the carrots are very important, but equally, um, you know, what are, what are the regulatory um, uh, issues or risks that, um, you know, uh, build, uh, people building or investing in hotels should be aware of? And increasingly, we are finding that a lot of government regulation sort of uh, leads to um, green building design incorporated in the hotels anyways. And we, we find in mature markets, as in Europe and certainly in Australia and New Zealand, regulation standards are perhaps higher than in the developing world. And that's why um, there's a lot of focus on hotel design and sustainability uh, early on in the journey. Uh, increase in value through certifications. There are a number of certification schemes out there that help increase the value of the asset because, you know, every time a, a lay person walks into a hotel and sees a hotel is certified, there's an automatic inference that the person makes, even if they know nothing about sustainability, that the hotel is doing something um, and has some certification or some credibility to claim that they are doing that. That certainly seems to work. Um, in terms of long-term energy supply, we are seeing huge trends in terms of shifting to renewable or more sustainable sources, and that um, that uh, adds um, a component of securing um, long-term supply at um, you know of green energy at a more um, sustainable price point as well. So those are some of the examples. What we what we learned also was that. Um, you know, it is no one entity can uh, work on green buildings in isolation. So it was very important to look at concerted action across the value chain that brings together the investors, the asset owners, uh, the owners, the developers, the operators, as well as the franchisees. So everyone's part of an ecosystem. And um, and if you want to, you know, there's 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 a saying of if you want to go uh, faster, go alone. But if you want to go further, um, work together. And that that really is uh, the essence of the business case because we do feel everyone's part of the same jigsaw puzzle and it really comes together to make um, make a bigger whole. Um, and that's that's why we encourage collaborative action, especially in this space. I'd like to point you to some of uh, resources that are available for free to download from our website. Um, certainly the business case for sustainable hotels, but also some tools for measuring your carbon and energy impact, uh, because you, you can only manage what you measure. Um, so there are these uh, free tools that we've created for the industry with inputs from our members. They're being used by more than 20,000 hotels globally. Um, but if you are looking at getting started, please do go to our website, uh, download the tools, the introductory webinars on those as well, and uh, feel free to use them. So I'll pause by, uh, with that um, and happy to take questions later on, but I'll, but I'll hand over to, um, to Thomas. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Madhu. This was a great presentation and I really liked how you emphasized collaboration because indeed we know that buildings are one of the is one of the most fragmented sectors with an incredibly fragmented value chain and also the emphasis on design, of course, which is so important. Um, just a quite kind reminder to our audience, please do post your questions in the Q&A box. I can see that some questions are already coming in, which is great. We have some time for Q&A at the end after all the speakers are done. If you have a questions, if you have a question, please also indicate to which speaker the question is addressed, or if it goes to all speakers, please also say so. And now, without further ado, indeed, I would like to um, pass the virtual mic to the next speaker, Tom Thomas Laughlin, on insights into consumer sustainability preferences. Thomas is with Booking.com. Thomas, over to you. Hi, thank you so much. I just want to confirm you can see my screen and hear me. Yes, we can see it very well and we can hear you very well. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. So yeah, um, I just want to take a moment to share a little bit about what we're doing here at Booking.com and some customer insights that we've experienced on this topic and also how it relates to corporate recovery as well. So at Booking.com, we make it easier for everyone to experience the world. We believe we have a shared responsibility along with our industry to make sure that there's a world worth experiencing. We know that there's opportunity. In fact, 86% of travelers want to travel more sustainably, but only half often or always manage to do so. This means that there's a gap. On the partner side, 82% of partners want to work with us on this topic. However, we know that there are frictions. From the customer side, there's a lack of understanding on how to make sustainable choices, a lack of transparency on um, what properties are sustainable, and a higher cost perception. From the partner side, there's a lack of understanding of impact, a lack of incentive, and a lack of knowledge or tools. We also know from um, some of our partners that they fall, sometimes fall victim to a, a topic called green hushing. Some partners have uh, sustainable practices in place, but prefer to keep them quiet because there's a lack of confidence on how to craft the message, a fear that the guests will think their experience will be negatively impacted, and a fear of sounding too preachy or patronizing. We also know coronavirus has amped people's awareness on, the, on their impact of the environment and local communities. 69% of travelers expect the travel industry uh, to offer more sustainable options. 55% of travelers want to see how their money is going back into the local community. And 53% of travelers want to reduce their waste and recycle their plastic. We also know that due to COVID, some partners have moved away from more sustainable practices as part of their health and safety measures. To support our partners on this topic, we worked in an advisory capacity with the UNEP where they produced a COVID recovery handbook on the topic of plastic pollution. This uh, handbook is available in the Partner Hub um, for all our partners. So we understand our philosophy. We see that there's opportunity. We've identified the frictions. How then do we make it possible for, for our customers to pick more sustainable choices? First of all, we want to identify and collect what our partners are currently doing. We expose that information to the guest in the booking process to create awareness. And then we use that awareness to drive the collection, moving the momentum forward. When we look at our model, we see that it's broken up into two tiers. The first tier is a, a, a framework that we produced with a third party and had validated by um, our peers, where it's a list of single actions or attributes that a partner can do that drives impact in one of the five topics, energy, greenhouse gases, water, waste, biodiversity, ecosystems, and destination community. We also know that certifications and chain programs already exist. So you want to be able to collect those, uh, those uh, hotels that have that as well. Collecting the information from tier one and tier two, we want to display that information to the guest in the booking process. That will allow us to increase our sustainable supply and demand. If we were to plot our partners as they stand at this moment in their sustainability journey, that in the left-hand bottom corner, we have zero or very little efforts currently in place. Out the way to the right, where you have a more sustainable developed product, certification or chain program, for example, we see that the majority of our partners plot uh, towards the left-hand side. This is a clear signal to us that we need to really show our partners the impact, incentivize our partners, provide tools and support, and simplify the journey for our partners so we can get them on their journey, creating confidence so they can do more and more and moving that momentum. 
So what does it look like for our, our partner and the, the customer at this moment? We've created a sustainability landing page where the partner can interact with the different topics of sustainability. They can find out the what and the why for each one. Once they've enabled these different topics, they can then move forward to the sustainability uh, facilities page in the extranet and take yes or no to these binary questions that exist. This you see is the first version. We do intend to have a second version available by the end of the year. And we'll also be collecting some sustainable uh, chain programs and some uh, certifications as well and displaying those to the guests. We have worked with experts like the Alliance uh, on producing a handbook for our partners. Our intention here is to simplify the journey of each of the topics so the partner can um, take advantage of the, the, the information that's here and then start building confidence around it and taking off more and more of these attributes that we have available in the extranet. We're also working on a webinar series. This is the second one. We, we do intend to have more available um, in, the, in the 2021. And then finally, what does this look like to our guests? So how are we displaying this information to create awareness around this topic? You'll see here we have a desktop version, an iOS, Android, and a mobile web version. The three to the left are currently live. The desktop version uh, is in iterations to be uh, live soon. We're doing some testing on it. This is what it currently looks like to the guests in, in the booking process. We will change the design a little bit as we start to add more and more attributes to this list, but this is where we are at the, mo at the moment. We see plenty of opportunity here. The signals are clear that the customer is wanting this. So it is important that we take advantage of that and give the, get, make it easier for them to uh, book more sustainable uh, options. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. I'll pass back over. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, what a great presentation. And it's so interesting to see these figures. We really see a steadfast majority of customers who are interested in sustainable hotels and sustainable traveling. So there's a gap, like you say, and that of course also shows us there's a real opportunity there. And it also I think it links so well, it links so well to uh, Madhu's presentation and how she showed us that it's really also about uh, lowering risk. It's, it's about future proofing. It's about it's a good return on investment. So it's really we we, we I think the picture that's coming together here is that it's a true win-win. Um, and with that, I would like to pass the virtual mic to our third speaker, to Rusmir Music from the International Finance Corporation, IFC. He will speak on edge certification and global finance mechanisms. Rusmir, over to you. Thank you so much for having us. Just making sure you can see the screen from my end. Yes, and, it works really uh, well. Great. So as you heard, um, from Nora, my name is Rusir Music. I am the Global Business Development Lead for IFC's Edge Green Buildings Program. And we're very pleased to continue our collaboration. IFC is a part of the Global Alliance and we work very closely with Nora and her team. And we also collaborated with the, with the Sustainable Hospitality Alliance. So the, the business case paper really is incredible and we encourage all of you to internalize uh, its findings. Uh, today, I will mostly talk about you a, a, about the point number three in the business case paper, how to future-proof your investment strategies. But before we start, let me just introduce IFC quickly to you. IFC, which is International Finance Corporation, is a member of the World Bank Group. Our mission is to support sustainable development in emerging markets. That means that some of IFC's resources may not be available in industrialized countries for you. However, the lessons learned in our EDGE program certainly have a global reach. IFC created a Green Buildings program as a systematic approach to sustainable building. It is a four-part strategy that includes working with banks, investing directly into the building sector, advising government on green building codes and incentives, and our EDGE certification program. You can see here some of our results, including $6.4 billion invested in green buildings about a billion of that that has gone to sustainable hotels. You can see that IFC does green buildings because it's good business for us. I've given you some of the reasons why, why we are working green buildings, but why should you care about green buildings from the perspective of green finance? There are many, many reasons to work within green finance flows. From the findings in the business case paper, more than 370 investors with over $35 trillion in assets now collectively ask major corporate emitters to reduce emissions and address climate risk. 
100 institutional investors representing about $22 trillion in assets under management use GRES, the Green Disclosure Platform for Real Estate. These investors monitor, engage with managers, and make decisions that are in line with their ESG commitment. Moody's rating agencies recently purchased a climate data firm signaling new scrutiny of climate impacts in their own ratings. All of this means that hotels without a solid ESG strategy could find themselves with a large portfolio of what we call stranded assets. These brown or stranded assets could affect your credit rating, insurance premium, or ability to raise funds. The good news is that all of these investors that we've talked about are looking for quality green investment opportunities. That means that working within green finance, you can access cheaper financing or a more diversified portfolio of investors. Here are just a few of the case studies described in the business case paper. Acor Hotels announced an agreement with a consortium of 15 banks for a 1.2 billion euro revolving credit facility, and the margin of it will be dependent on the group's ESG performance. City Developments Limited, launched the first green bond um, by a Singapore company at a very attractive rate of 1.9.8% and use it to refinance an existing loan, por loan portfolio. HSBC's program has uh, already pledged 600 million British pounds to UK businesses as part of its uh, pilot, including 175 million uh, pounds uh, in a green loan for Edwardian Hotels London to ensure its new uh, super boutique hotel, The Londoner, will be one of the greenest hotels in the UK. So what are these investors looking for? What do they mean when they say they want a green building or a sustainable hotel? IFC has worked with a number of standard setting bodies to distill their investment criteria. You can see here that we work from everyone from green um, finance st uh, standard uh, makers such as International Capital Markets and Climate Bonds Initiative, as well as the newest, the EU taxonomy. And we also work with disclosure bodies such as GRES and CDP. All these standard setters agree on a three-part criteria for a green building. A building must be certified green, as verified by an independent third party. It needs to have at least a 20% better performance in the local baseline and ability to have quantified impact reporting. The good news is that if you satisfy the above criteria, 100% of your finance or even of a refinance uh, for a building can be counted as green. This is incredibly attractive to investors that have a high commitment to sustainable investing. IFC can help you reach the standard through our green building program called EDGE, which stands for Excellence in Design for Greater Efficiency and it has three components. We have a free software that helps you choose the most cost-effective ways to build green. We have an achievable green building standard that's in line with the international finance criteria. And third, EDGE is a certification system to verify and reward green building projects for green label. In the business case paper, you will see studies on return on investment for both new hotels and retrofits and that the payback period is usually less than a year if these green measures are implemented thoughtfully. EDGE was launched as a free public good through the generous donations of governments supporting the World Bank Group. As such, it was first focused on emerging markets. We have since been expanding our reach, first in Europe, and by January 2021, when our version three is expected, EDGE will be a fully global tool. What you will like about it is that it's the first time that a green certification program was launched by a bank. Now that we understand the definitions, let's take a look at the financial mechanisms that can de allow deployment. IFC partnered with the UNWTO, the World Tourism Organization, this past July on a series of webinars around green finance mechanisms. I will present a short summary to you, but you can find the deep dive presentations in this link on the UNWTO website. The most straightforward way is for hotels to get a loan from either a global bank or a local financial institution. IFC can directly invest in projects in emerging markets, but we actually do work with many global banks to offer them advice on their projects. In the second model, 
Institutions are investing in local banks, which are then on lending to local projects. This helps large global banks or institutional investors reach more projects, which would otherwise be too small for direct investment. IFC is actually very interested in this model for emerging markets, and we are in the process of launching what we call the Hotel Green Revitalization Program. The program will work with local banks in pilot countries, deploy a facility that will help hotels, one, finance their debt, and two, be able to include green retrofitting in that process. The funds will be dispersed to local financial institutions, along with technical assistance for hotel owners. And this program, as I said, is upcoming. The aggregator model is another possible model for, uh, especially for refurbishments. And aggregation can be done through different platforms. It could be that the hotel brand puts together all projects in a particular country or a region looking for financing, or we can work with the body such as UNWTO, which has investment forums, which bring together investors and projects. Finally, I already touched this a little bit, and I'll talk about the capital markets. Green bonds are a fast-growing uh, finance mechanism. A green bond can be issued by various bodies in the hotel chain, which have enough projects in their pipeline to justify a sizable bond. The bond can be deployed, as you saw a little bit earlier from the case studies, for new projects, for refurbishment, or for refinance of existing projects, if the cost of financing you find is cheaper than the original bank rate. Banks which own large portfolio of these loans can even securitize the whole for portfolio and free up cash for new projects. What you saw today is just a very short preview of the extensive resources that are available to you and help you succeed, whether you're a hotel owner, an investor, or even a consultant in this space. I hope that we have shown you the attractiveness of reading your hotels from utility savings, differentiation with customers, all the way to accessing cheaper finance and a more diversified pool of investors. As I mentioned, IFC may or may not be able to work with you directly depending on the location of your project. However, we have a large network of consultants, certification providers, as well as lessons learned that we share on our website, edgebuildings.com, on how best to launch green real estate investment programs. I'll turn it over uh, next, but I want to welcome you all as a partner on your journey to transform the entire hospitality industry. Thanks. Thank you so much, Rusmir. What a compelling case also here um, on how to access a new group of investors and new finance. Again, also, I think, links strongly to Madhu's case on diversification, on addressing risk. And it also really reminds me of a figure in our Global Status Report, our new upcoming annual Global Status Report on buildings and construction, how investment in buildings, and I actually think that comes from IFC, is a $24 uh, trillion dollar opportunity. I think it's one of the biggest investment opportunities that is there, green buildings. So um, really great case and um, I'm sure that inspiring to our listeners. Thank you so much. I can see more questions are coming in, which is great. Kind of reminder to our audience, please do uh, send us your question in the Q&A box and do also uh, mention which speaker they are addressed to. And now I would like to pass the virtual mic on to our last, but certainly not least speaker, to Alan Agerholm, who is the CEO with BC Hospitality Group. And he'll be speaking on a hotel perspective, practical examples and benefits. Alan, over to you. Thank you very much, Nora. Good evening. Good morning and good afternoon to you wherever you are listening in on uh, this broadcast. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, participate here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, I am a CEO or CHO of BC Hospitality Group. We are a Danish uh, hospitality firm. We operate um, the Bella Center, which is one of the largest convention uh, exhibition uh, venues in uh, Northern Europe, along with three internationally branded hotels. Um, and core Marriott and AC by Marriott and uh, last but not least the Crown Plaza which is uh, what you see on the, the screen right now and which is really the foundation of our business case of running 
a uh, sustainable hospitality uh, business, which you uh, will see on the next slide, we call Responsible Hospitality. We were founded in 2007, so we are now uh, just 13 years old, and we actually founded on this the project that you see on the screen, which was the um, the uh, construction of the Crown Plaza Copenhagen Towers alongside Copenhagen Towers, which is a commercial letting facility here in Copenhagen. And we were founded based on the principles that you see on the screen, which was sustainability at the heart of everything uh, that we do. And um, we started out uh, with just this one property, uh, right from scratch and right from a Bearfield site in 2007, opened uh, with a COP15 uh, conference in uh, in Copenhagen in, in 2009. So uh, and we decided that we would put sustainability really at the heart of of everything that we do. And one of the first things was in fact the investment in a um, sustainable uh, hotel uh, construction. And so what you're looking at here uh, is a black building, but it's also one of the greenest commercial hotels in the world. It's got numerous awards to that effect. And we did that by really sitting down with our uh, advisors and, and challenging them from conventional construction thinking into saying, well, how can you actually innovate and implement um, innovative building and operational sustainability solutions that would allow a, a property like this forever after to be a uh, or to make the least mark possible on environment from uh, hotel building operations. Um, and uh, you see on the next slide that one of the first things we decided to do were we, we did some geothermal um, explorations on the site and we discovered that sort of about uh, 200 meters below us we have uh, ground water, which by nature is about eight degrees cold. And um, we adopted, a, at that time, fairly new uh, Dutch technology of using this ground water for cooling of the building in the, the summer period. This is what you see um, on the sort of the, the left-hand side of this uh, technical chart, <clears throat> is the ground water being pumped up into the technical room and then used as the refrigerant or, or the chiller for our building uh, cooling in the summer period where we run a full AC package as you would for an international brand hotel. We then pump it down on, into the well on the right hand side and in, in the course of the summer we overheat this well so that depending on how good a summer we have we reach a, um, a temperature of anywhere between 14 and 16 degrees of this well and we then, in the winter time, for the heating, reverse the process, and that's where we are right now. <clears throat> so we're using this water as the uh, the sort of the basic uh, heating facility for our building heating, and we're pumping it back in and adding some electricity from uh, green electricity sources. Tip here, it's windmill uh, energy we use, so that we can heat the building up to the normal um, uh, room temperature that a guest would require because the guest in our hotel has a, an, a full and normal ability to control the heating and cooling in home bedrooms, <clears throat> as you would expect. On the next slide, one of our other investments, uh, and which was at the time <clears throat> a very stupid investment from the point of view that return on this investment had a horizon of about 25 years, whereas the, the groundwater heating and cooling uh, was repaid in less than five because of its high efficiency and low cost. <clears throat> this was on the contrary, a high investment cost and low efficiency. You are looking at the largest building integrated solar panel park in Northern Europe. Um, and why is it not such a great investment? Yeah, because it was very expensive to fit these panels, custom made, as you can see in this pattern, to, to ensure that that the, the, the tower itself was aesthetic and, and uh, we could match it on the northern and um, so the, the the western and northern facades with glass, so that we had homogeneous uh, building design. Uh, but this actually delivers about 10% of our electricity consumption. And here, 13 years later, we see that the degradation that we actually worried about at the time, because we thought they would degrade quite quickly, has actually degraded less. So we still deliver somewhere between eight and nine percent. Uh, of course, depending on the summer, we had a decent summer this year, so we're okay. 
uh, into the property and, and um, because we consume much more we did not have to attach to the grid and, and could, uh, could just pump it straight back into the property and, and use it uh, there. Other aspects of um, green innovation were upcycling as you will see here. <clears throat> this is taken from the atrium that connects the hotel property with the, uh, the commercial letting property and, and you wouldn't know that this was a, um, a sustainable room but actually you're looking at uh, reused uh, concrete um, the floor is a concrete floor where where the um, uh, old concrete has been crushed and then reused you're looking at a corridor leading to the elevator where um, uh, all the panels are window frames that have been uh, taken apart and uh, and colored in and then put up uh, back onto the wall. Just hang on one second. I can here. It's 11 p.m. In, in Denmark and this is the time when you have dogs that they decide that they want to be very active before they go to bed. So I hope the noise is not too overwhelming out there. Sorry about that. <clears throat> but they're having a field day here. Um, and it doesn't stop at that. On the next slide, you will see some of the examples from our hotel guest bedrooms, uh, where we just single out some of the, the initiatives we, we have put in, aerated water faucets, energy efficient appliances. In 2008 and 9, uh, LED light bulbs were a relatively new invention. Um, now there are everywhere, uh, but what you actually see uh, in those lamps at the time were cutting edge because they were LED, uh, so they were low, they were not LED, pardon me, they were low energy light bulbs that did not have to warm up. Uh, I don't know uh, the age of, of everybody out there, but if, if, if you were involved in this at the time, you would maybe remember that the uh, energy efficient light bulbs, they, they needed sort of two or three or four minutes to go from about 80% efficiency to 95% efficiency at the time. They were really, really annoying. Uh, we found some that would turn on uh, pretty quick. Certified wood, uh, no single use plastic. And of course, uh, we, we use uh, organic or a fair trade uh, bed linen and so forth and so on. Uh, they're just examples, and, and because of the time, um, I will keep it uh, so relatively brief. <clears throat> we we founded our uh, company based on the principle of the Global Compact, which was relatively new at the time. And since then, of course, the SDGs have come in. You see the wheel here. I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar and aware of it, and, and you know there's the 17 goals. And we have, uh, as from the very beginning, adopted these 17 goals into our everyday operation uh, and we have actually decided to sort of split them into five core principles and you see them uh, on the screen here careers that matter healthy living that matter conserving resources that matter make products that matter and partnerships that matter because we believe that our mission is to host moments that matter in responsible hospitality and we've actually been able to relate and implement all 17 goals into our operation uh, because we can make a difference in every single one of them. Now, the difference is not the same in every 17 because, take an example, corruption in Scandinavia is almost non-existent. So for us to make a big impact on corruption here is not going to happen. But fair trade, fair pricing, uh, as an example, uh, we can make a huge difference on, on because some of our big ticket items, coffee as an example, or cocoa beans for chocolate, well, you know, we can actually make a difference out there and we believe that uh, we actually do. And my final point here is when all this is said and done, if you are then you're an operator, it, it makes no commercial sense if you don't communicate it. <clears throat> um, as I think was mentioned in the booking.com um, presentation earlier on, our guests and customers out there are quite weary about what's going on in this field right now. And uh, I think we have a huge opportunity and a huge obligation in tourism uh, to take um, action, to take responsibility for hospitality and communicate that we actually do it because on the other side of, of Corona and virus and COVID-19, I'm actually quite uh, convinced 
that sustainability in tourism is going to be very, very important uh, for people, uh, alongside, of course, health matters and cleanliness and so on, uh, when we restart uh, the international uh, tourism. So communicate uh, all that you do uh, out there, wherever you do it, and um, get involved and take responsibility. That's all for me here from now in Copenhagen. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks so much, Alan, and again, a really inspiring presentation. It's always great to hear from, let's say, the actors on the ground, uh, to really hear a perspective of a hotel or hotel group in this case. And I really also liked your perspective on SDGs. And in fact, we had a question from the audience on SDGs um, and that it's important to address several and especially those that apply in your region, in your countries. Um, and I also really, the point on communication, I think, is essential. We are now, we now come to our Q&A round. So I'd like to ask all of our speakers to turn their cameras back on. I'll just give them a moment if everyone could turn their camera back on. All our speakers, I can see Madhu, just uh, waiting for the others as well. Rusmir and Alan if you could also come again. Great. And uh, we have some great questions from the audience, so let's delve right in. So the first question I'd like to start right away with Alan um, on uh, how can I engage my staff in identifying opportunities to implement sustainable practices? Now, you spoke a lot about communication, um, but of course, in the day-to-day -day operation of a hotel, you need to have staff on your side. So I'm uh, really uh, looking forward to hear your your thoughts on that one, Alan? Well, my thoughts and the way that we did it here may not apply one-to-one -to, -one to everybody else because we founded the company based on sustainability at the heart of everything we do. So every single colleague brought on board has been onboarded on that agenda. And that means that we live and breathe sustainability in everything we do every day, um, <clears throat> no matter who uh, who you are. Uh, it's not that we're religious about it, but we're just very observant about it. And we have practices in place for pretty much every aspect of where we have an environmental impact, right from, as I mentioned here in the presentation, how we built this particular hotel to when we then later took over the Bella Center, uh, the AC Bella Sky Hotel and the Marriott. And we've sort of retrofitted the same uh, principles and practices into, in essence, old um, teams of people, the Bella Center is more than 50 years old. And, and um, I think one of our key learnings were that you need to you need to meet new colleagues and you need to meet colleagues that you want to bring onto the sustainability in I, in, in eye height. You know, don't talk over them or don't talk down to them, but meet them in eye height and show them what it is that, that you would like to do. Uh, we spent a lot of time on, on that particular agenda and then take it step by step. You know, you cannot eat an elephant in, in one mouthful. You have to eat it uh, bite size. Um, and, and, and this is what we did in, in those companies when we then uh, uh, sort of started to fit these things in and, and stay firm because there are always skept skeptics and there are also always those that don't want to. And, and I, I can give you one quick example. When we, when we took over the, the AC uh, Hotel Bella Sky, they already had in place uh, an ability to take food waste and grind it into the tank so it can become biofuel. One that we we in, in, installed one of the first ones in Denmark at the Crown Plaza a few years before. They just weren't using it because they thought it was annoying. And and then you you have to to convince and persuade these people that it's maybe a, a more difficult way of getting rid of your food trash than to throw it in the bin, but it serves a purpose. Um, and, and I think that those are the key points that I, I can highlight here that, that, that we, have, um, we have worked with. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it, it all comes down to management and leadership. You know, if, if I just, if I don't walk the talk, it's absolutely useless. Uh, then I can, uh, it, it will never, never work. That's a really great response, Alan. Uh, liking, I really like the emphasis on walking the talk. Communication is one thing, but you need to walk the talk. You need to be authentic about it. And also, I liked your metaphor on uh, eating the elephant uh, bit by bit, <laughs> taking step by step. Also, I think uh, very, very important and meeting your staff at eye level. Um, uh, we have some other great questions here. And Alan, of course, already spoke about SDGs, but I do want to pick this up again 
with uh, Madhu. Um, we heard, of course, a lot about sustainability uh, from an environmental standpoint, from a resource standpoint. Um, but what about other SDGs? What about other sustainable development goals? Ellen mentioned this. Uh, we have, of course, um, one on gender equality. We have one on partnerships. And then we have one on water, on city health, on health and well-being, you name it, on and on. Um, can, you, can you talk a little bit about um, how those SDGs should feature within the hospita hospitality industry? Absolutely, Nora. Thank you. What a great question. And I, I, I was really looking forward to answering this. Um, I think I'd like to begin by saying the four areas of action that we identified in 2017 were actually based on the UN SDGs that were announced in 2015 and industry leadership coming together and saying, how do we take the UN SDGs and apply them to our industry? And that led to a materiality assessment for our four areas. And you'll see that each of the areas actually encompasses within itself uh, or speaks directly to a number of the uh, of the SDGs, whether you talk about youth employment or as we're beginning to call it inclusive employment or human rights, um, you know, that, that speaks to a number of SDGs that exist as well as climate action and water stewardship, whether you're looking at SDG 6 and water or SDG 12 and climate action, you know, it, it, it is cross-cutting across the various areas uh, mapped against how they're relevant to the hospitality industry. But my favorite one really is SDG 17, which I really believe in. And actually, when we were going through our rebranding exercise for the last 12, 18 months, that was front, right and center of, uh, of all the work we did. And you look at our brand colors, the navy blue comes from SDG 17, because I believe partnerships are so important uh, to move the needle on some of the issues that we're dealing with. And for Sustainable Hospitality Alliance, that SDG underpins everything we do. We we pride ourselves on our ability to create public-private partnerships, bringing together the civil society, uh, the public sector, and the private sector to actually collaborate on a number of programs that we have. So, you know, that that is the ethos of our organization. And, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to continue building on it and, um, and sort of, um, uh, you know, have more examples that demonstrate the case in point for us. So thank you. Great question. Yeah, thank you. And thanks to our audience for asking such an insightful question. Indeed, um, really like the emphasis on partnership, SDG 17, as you said. And uh, we know, especially in buildings, nothing works without partnership, without collaboration. So indeed, one of uh, a really important one. Um, I'd now, li now like to go to Rusmir with a question that's very, very timely and COVID related from our audience. With tourism and profits are uh, really low right now due to COVID-19. How, how can a hotel even begin to build a case to invest in putting more money into uh, the hotel, into the sustainability of a hotel? What's the first step? Um, you know, because the asset is, is being uh, unused right now, it actually is the right time to take a look inward, um, to take a pause and see, you know, where can you actually change your operations or even the building design? Because you're not going to be disrupting any kind of guest flow afterwards. And you heard from you know, Booking.com and from others that when the consumer demand returns, those consumers will be looking for, you know, for green properties. They'll be maybe a little bit more picky and choosy. There'll be way more supply than is demand. And so sustainability is, in fact, a great differentiator. So you know, you are saving uh, funds um, on site with the utility bill savings. You're satisfying consumer demand you actually may be able to refinance your loan by plugging into uh, an ESG investor who can give you a better better rate. So, you know, across the board, actually, this is the time uh, to, get it, um, uh, to get it done right, actually. That's great, Rizmia, and I really like this wording also of uh, sustainability as the great differentiator, and I think it links also well to what the other presenters were saying, making the case that it is a win-win. I mean, it is about accessing new investors, it's about accessing uh, new uh, or additional customers, and it's, a, uh, it's, it's the case of uh, diversifying risk. With us, we come to the end of our webinar, and um, this was fantastic, and thank you so much both to our attendees and to our fantastic uh, speakers. Um, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. And um, thanks again for joining us today. Please keep an eye out for a follow-up email from booking.com with tools and resources. And uh, of course, I think our speakers have already posted some in the chat. 
So do have a look there as well. And do visit the Sustainable Hospitality Alliance website for access to free sustainability tools and resources and to view this webinar again. Once more, thank you to everyone. Thank you to the organizers, to the speakers and to the attendees. We wish you a very good evening, morning, day, wherever you are. Thank you and goodbye.